Basically, mine is like a little puzzle piece of a bigger puzzle that we're trying to solve. And even these seamounts that we're looking at right now are part of that puzzle that we're trying to put together of a, of a possible long-lived hotspot that's currently active at the Marquesis hotspot. But that's just a working theory right now, or a hypothesis. We're trying to see if our samples collected from the Nautilus meet, meet that, those expectations. And so far, my, my ages are looking really, really great from the Nautilus. So they picked amazing rocks. I was so happy. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, because one of my friends, Nick, he was actually on the last expedition as a geologist. He, he has, again, he's working on a, another piece of the long puzzle. And he did not get as lucky as I did with my, with his rocks, which is like, again, one of these things of like, at least we're picking up these rocks from the seafloor, but we never really know what we're going to get until we cut them open on our ship. So like we could see a lot, like for example, one of the last ones off of our, the Seamount Loudon, I think that's how you pronounce it. Loudon, sorry. Loudon, it, we had some clinopyroxene phenocris which are also fantastic for determining ages, but I didn't use any of those minerals guys. to determine my ages because mm -hmm. I just used ampoules, which are Let's which see, are way I mean, do you want, like, more resilient to alteration. Because you'll get alteration because these rocks uh. are formed in the deep sea. And hydrothermal, not sorry, hot, hot water will always cause alteration no matter what. So the more alteration also sometimes suggests that it's older. So that's also another thing that we've been seeing on a lot of the rocks that we pulled up. It's just like tons of alteration. And we were like, so these rocks have got to be really old. So it's a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. So. Thanks, thanks, Tori. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. And I'm excited to hear all of your thoughts and see and hear your excitement through the rest of this dive because we've got some Closer. cool looking rocks. Yeah. And no. features. I know, and I can't wait till we put the clinopyroxenes under the microscope because we're going to have to call everybody in Could to you come swing see the vehicle them. Around this way, it's no? going to look so cool. Yes, please call me in. <laughs> I also want to be around for the next rock saw. That way? Yeah. Experience. It's almost like when I went to Disney World once in the Japanese so area, are, they, like they like cut open oysters and then they like get, a, get a pearl out. out. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. yeah. And it just reminds me of that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what's in it until you open it. Yeah. What yeah. about fossils? Sometimes can you, you find know, a to fossil? try to get ahead of us? Well, apparently in the manganese nodules, you can find fossils. Yeah. So, and we're still gonna look out for those today, but okay. they're really hard to to tell the size. It's really hard. Cause the last one that we did, there were only like three sandy. that could be possible nodules. What? Yeah, it's hard yeah. to tell if it's a nodule or just a rock. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so I think or you're going a rock wrong. fragment. Yeah. I think you wanna head up this way. We won't see any nodules in this current area because they prefer a little uh, bit more of a flatter slope. Yeah. Like, yeah. They will not be seen on a cliff face. If anything, yeah, they'll be at the saying. bottom of the cliff face where we're not. Yeah, I'm assuming at right after wave point two, there could be possible nodules. I would agree. Um, for our viewers, wave point two is on a bit of a flat area so on our way, way up. So hopefully up there might way. be some good settlement area for many nodules. So it kind of seems like can you go up? So as we're talking about manganese nodules, what is the value um, to science um, of these nodules? So our friends, well, I guess our colleagues, they're trying to use these, well, look at these manganese nodules to study their growth pattern because on these manganese nodules, you can see the different times the manganese crust formed. So there are also very important minerals 
that, well, not sorry, minerals, elements that also form with these nodules, like cobalt, iron, is that iron? Yeah. And then um, copper, copper. a little bit of silver and gold. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of miscellaneous metals that are going there. It mm -hmm. depends on the ocean, its conditions, etc. Yeah. Um, from an intellectual perspective, using them to date their ages and do studies on their compositions are useful intellectually. Um, in regards to a broader impact, um, they are very crucial, these metals, into the construction of batteries for our smartphones, our laptops, our smart cars, as well as green technologies. I have a question. What, yes. When you say determining their ages, what element are they using? They're using um, primarily, I believe it's uranium for that one. Uranium? I think it's uranium, and they also can count the rings like trees if they know uh -huh. the basic growth rate of the area. Huh. That's so interesting. Uranium. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see it, but I want to, now I want to know know more about that. You're going to have to show me the paper that you, you read that from. Well, let's pull something out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad to see that this is a protected area. Um, it is part of Papahanao Mokoakea Marine National Monument, which is the largest uh, marine protected area um, in the U.S. So making sure that we protect and preserve these ecosystems, um, you know, for the organisms that live there and for humanity, really, um, you know, making sure that it's protected against things like mining and um, deep sea mining and the impacts that could have. Miss Malia, I think I overheard the first watch saying that this seamount was once trolleyed. Trolley to Troll. Troll. Yeah, Troll. I'm reading that now in the dive yeah. plan. I was just about to ask about, um, it looks like we are going to be looking at potential impacts from previous trawling activities. Yeah. And I know this was like before oh. the monument was established, but Yeah, so trawling how long is, ago? um, trawling is, did they spell it wrong? No. No, they spelled it right. I Why spelled it wrong. Why are you crossing it off? I'm not cro I'm highlighting it. Oh, it looks like you crossed it out. <laughs> no, no, I'm highlighting um, it. <laughs> So that's not a highlight, that's black. That's, that's navy. <laughs> okay, who highlights in navy blue? <laughs> I do. I think navy is a beautiful color to highlight, Hannah. Keep going. That makes no sense. Okay. Um, no, no highlight shaming. Highlighting like the deep oh sea. Oh, God. Um, so trawling is when uh, fishermen uh, tow weighted nets along the seabed, and they have these doors called otter doors that hold the net open, and then there's weighted chains. Um, and that kind of tickle the bottom to, to, to make shrimp and other uh, bottom dwelling. So you're trying to get to that uh, feature right there. Animals uh, either either side kind of bounce up into continue. the net, um, and it, it causes um, it's it, well it's indiscriminate so as catch. So if you catch what you're looking for, a shrimp or or scallops or whatever, we're but we're also to the you know anything in its way, ahead. corals, sponges. I think with this anchor. Um, also, it, it plows furrows I into the sediment, down in that so it's actually very destructive to, uh, oh. to the seabed. So that's one of the reasons why this, you know, monument was established to 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 protect some of these seamounts. Um, and and I've also documented trawl damage to shipwrecks. Um, scallop judges can shear the bow off of a wreck, um, and and trawls have uh, we documented them uh, slicing through ancient shipwrecks and smashing. Uh, ceramic artifacts like you like emperors. So uh, yeah, it is a concern yeah. in a lot of different ways. So so it w if we get to the top like the of the email, we'll look for uh, some of the old trawl scars that that may have may be up there. Mm -hmm. And what will those look like? Just like lines in the sediment? Yeah, they're going like to look like furrows or bas so basically trawling is uh, equivalent to plowing a field. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, was, yeah, you're going to see like V-shaped, um, maybe five to ten centimeter scars. Now, th they may have sedimented in, depending on how long ago uh, the activity stopped. But uh, we're going to look for that. It, it'll it'll be a pretty barren landscape if if uh, and we don't know for sure that this one's been trawled, but mm -hmm. it probably had at some point in the past. A little maze in here. Like, when do you think in the past it could have been targeted? 
Uh, Malia, when was the same, when was the expansion? Um, it was 2018. Uh, the, the expansion. So the original monument was 2006, and then expanded in 2016. So 2016, it, you know, the, that was when the protections were put in place. So mm -hmm. assuming that, you know, it, it, it's it's tough to enforce because it's such a massive area. So I don't I don't know how that's done, but you know, it, let's say that at 2016 everybody stopped. You know, that's uh, seven years. Uh, so you know, trail scars can. It depends on the sedimentation rate, um, but we'll mm -hmm. see what, what we see. Okay. Um, in terms of these impacts of trawls on deep sea systems like this, it can be extremely Do impactful. You want me to pull Argus down again, as like a lot of these animals, several studies have been done on deep sea impacts from trawls. And mo in most cases, after visiting yeah, a trawl after 25 to 30 years, you'll see barely any new animals like coming to recolonize the area. So it's likely that it takes upwards of hundreds of years to repair wow. an ecosystem that's been impacted by a troll. This be good, like uh, two, six, three. Thank you both, Mike and Sebastian, for all of that insight. Um, okay. And just kind of helping us figure out what we're going to be looking for. And then also, Hannah, your mom says good morning, and she's wondering if we've collected any samples yet. Hey, Mom. Uh, no, we have not collected any samples yet. We're waiting till we get to flatter ground, because right now we're on a part, we're on part of an elongated ridge centering out from the guillot. So right now we're on an incline, and it just, these rocks are, I. I wouldn't take any of any of these. We have seen some really cool. Yeah, just because we haven't sampled doesn't mean she hasn't yeah. been excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you've met her, right? <laughs> um, she, we've seen um, those dikes. I mean, I, I want to say yes, but I haven't seen anything like that to yeah. compare it to. Um, but some pretty cool rock features that um, we haven't attempted to sample. We'll probably try to get another sample when we get to this next waypoint. Yeah, yeah it just looked like it all like was these pillars just like attached. Kind of yeah, yeah, it did. But it, I'll point, I'll, I'll draw them out next, next time, so y'all can see. It is a note that while we have not sampled during our shift, there have been samples taken from previous shifts for the, today's dive. But we'll get a sample, mom. We'll get a sample. Thank you. And then also, I know my dad's watching, so hi, dad. <laughs> now back to work. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're both at work right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just um, uh, an update. Like, Cuskill, maybe, left. Can we get zoom in? These features that we're seeing, these pinnacles, is not something we could resolve from mapping from the ship. It's just we don't have that kind of resolution from mapping from the surface, so we don't see all these interesting smaller features until we're actually here with the ROV. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's much more complex and interesting than you might think just from a surface map. Makes navigation hard too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll say too, Derek, it's really cool to be just like sitting here in the van now looking at everything because yesterday I was hanging out with you a little bit in the data lab and learning a lot yeah. about mapping and how up. this comes That's together nice. and it's just like amazing to see the map now and then also be exploring this place thanks yeah it was, it was great talking with you about it all and um, for the viewers out there we did, did just map this seamount um, finishing up last night and so this is a seamount that had not ever been mapped from a ship before and revealed like this amazing mountain um, yeah. over 4,000 meters tall from the seafloor. Um, so a really huge mountain that we're seeing for are the those, first time. Yeah, cool? it's a re really cool um, I would just say possible dike uh, mapping. Uh, there's there's like a, a really uh, long ridge on the other side. And then here we're on the, on the edge of what looked like a really uh, striking um, slump is like this perfect crescent of where where a landslide had given way um so we're looking at uh some of the features on the side of that as we come up but yeah i mean it, it just goes to show like you know we're in a we're in a uh, a noaa marine national marine monument but i mean especially out here i think this is actually the farthest seamount 
uh, we're at the very border of the uh, of the monument, so we're as far out as you can get. And you know, there's so much here that's not only has it not been looked at, but it hasn't even been been mapped with Thinking with sonar. So it's like there's okay. so much to do, even in, even in yeah. an area that we've established yeah, protections. There's there's still so much exploration and and documentation to, and of course sampling, right? Uh, to now. do out here. We we could we could probably do a hundred expeditions out here and still have still have stuff to do. This is a pretty amazing pinnacle. Uh, yeah. A move, please. One zero meters, bearing two seven zero. So I just think the seat. Oh, am I? Down there? I can Thank hear you. you. Okay. Um, it's hard to see the the variations as we go up in the amount of corals. These big ones, and it's just a very low lying. So I'm wondering if there's a lot of instability on these cliffs that are causing the cliff faces to up, you know? slide down and restart and disturb these communities, creating new areas and have that differentiation. My brother just sent a, sent a message. He goes, you've been replying to my texts anytime I send them. Have you been sleeping? I said, <laughs> I said no. <laughs> yep. That's funny. I was like, you, uh, you can yeah. turn around 270 if you Not want. Not really where we're moving. Oh, yeah. We're moving. No, gen our general bearing is sleeping. 270. No, especially the past few days for you have been yeah. Yeah. nonstop. So that's which understandable. Yeah, if you turn your heading to the right, you'll see. Yeah. Well, I've been I've been communicating so much with people on shore. It's just yeah, we gotta start coming up. Text and yeah. WhatsApp and all sorts of messages were coming in throughout all those dives just constantly, because uh, try you know trying to to manage um, science chat and other mm -hmm. stuff. There a lot of them were were just turning to. Yeah, I guess we don't have to put a, a to put direct it in the move messages, right now. which which helps. Still pretty close mm -hmm. to the wall. We can just, just continue like up at constant. It's nice. It's nice to get back into our regular pattern. It was really cool, though, like learning a lot from you guys, because I, I probably had, I did not know a lot about maritime oh. archaeology until, until that. I had no it's idea. It's a slow move, though, what right? What a starboard like, was, what a port was. <laughs> I had no idea what those were. Point two knots. That's funny. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're point two knots. Yeah, we okay. have to approach uh, documenting we'll shipwrecks different when up. it's ROV versus scuba diver, or mm -hmm. also. When it's single, super deep ROV, than than it would be with this with our normal setup. So um, it was a learning experience for all of us because it was we hadn't done it that way before. And so the slow movements, the deliberate movements, and the careful navigation really we had it dialed in. I think by the end. <laughs> oh, I I couldn't tell that y'all weren't dialed in at all. Oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> there are sometimes it's just like we when we were moving along the. We'll say the starboard side of the wreck, um, and we, you know, we came to the bow of the stern, and we wanted to change directions and go back up the port side. Oh. <laughs> the the vehicle was like, oh no, I still have a ton of momentum in this direction. Uh. I think it was, I think it was you, Mike. You came back from a quick breakout, and we were talking about what we were looking at, and, you're, and it was of no real interest. And you're like, okay, we don't need to look at this. Let's move along the bow. <laughs> and we're like, uh, we are. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why aren't, yeah. Yeah, why are you guys staying right here looking at mud? Yeah. Have we seen this many sponges yet? On There's the a lot of sponges, huh? Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that. There's a lot. A lot of low-lying ones. And the, they all seem to be covered in a little bit of like detritus or sediment as well. That makes them look a little bit like almost algae covered, but there are, is no algae down here. I know. I, I accidentally used that word algae and he was like, they're not down here. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> it looks algae-like. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's like a, a green. Greenish. Yeah. There's often so much to look at right now. It's just like zip going and going, like scroll, going up and down, up and down the screen as it goes, trying to see if there's anything Small new, but it's fish. so dense, it can be hard to tell at times. Uh, mm. yeah. go, go for zoom. Uh, the one that just went out of frame? Oh, right here. Right in front of us. Oh, yeah, That's got it, fish. got it. So, Co-pilot? I did not see it's that. It's a rat tail. Just keep me posted on what you what you want to do. And 
Yep, definitely a rat tail. We're still a little deep to find sharks, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I think you find sharks at many depths. Well, the ones that we're looking at, I think they've, they, we've mostly seen down to like maybe 1,200 meters. Actually, I have it written down. <coughs> Somewhere. Is that a parasite on the fish? Let's find out. Full zoom. Appears to be so. Yeah, 1,200. Oh. You just hit the coral. Oh. Coming out. Y'all are talking about like the spot on its head? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty common to yeah, see like, that. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, this that's is, crazy. Yeah, that's really cool. How would you define that, Hannah? I, I want to say a dike-like feature, but yeah. I, I'm not sure because I haven't seen anything like it, so I'd have to wait for Val because Val could just tell me, too, that, oh, it's just, it looks like a broken sheet. <laughs> so I... I will definitely be asking her when when she gets up because I know she's she's resting up because she relieves us at eight. Yeah, I mean, so it, I could see it being you guys step up again? faulted, but I think it, it, you know, and I'm just completely uh, guessing sorry here. Sorry to cut in. Yeah, Can we yeah, look yeah. at that rounded sponge <laughs> on the left? Sure. I guess we just wait. hold off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a complete guess, but if I had to guess, I would say that it's probably intrusions. Mm -hmm. uh, volcanic, so it, it came into cracks in the in the uh, rock. Okay, and no need for in. a zoom. I can now determine it's not what we're looking for. Roger pushed, that. No need for a zoom. Roger, zoom just not highlight. zooming. <laughs> it is beautiful, though. It is. Okay, what were you saying? Nothing. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so, I'm, like, if I had to guess, I'd say it could, it could be quartz, which often comes in as. Uh, um, oh, like veins? Yeah, veins? But, I, but I think it's a little too thick for that. There, there shouldn't. Definitely there shouldn't be. Okay. No, there should not be quartz zooming veins out. with basalt. It's like one of the things that but you can't find. But couldn't it come in afterwards? Um, not usually for volcanic eruptions. Hmm. Okay. But so it's just I do think I do. Intrusive other basalt. Mm, yes, oh, okay. I do think that because we saw on the geo. Well, Sebastian noticed that it could have had a rejuvenation phase. So it could have filled in those crevices with the dikes when it was yeah. re-erupting re, uh, re or erupting again. But yeah, that, that was what I was thinking too. Oh, I guess quartz is usually hot fluid, not hot mm -hmm. magma. Yeah, that's right. Like I like to think of or at least when I we did a field trip to Arkansas and they have a lot of quartz veins okay. mm -hmm. and hot springs. Oh and yeah, it, okay, that makes sense. Uh huh. So, but I see where your head was at. Ridge, yeah. yeah. And I appreciate that. Well, because also we can't tell because it's all covered in manganese coat anyway. Yeah. Please do a, a move one zero meters bearing two seven zero, mm -hmm. and the speed you've been doing the moves at is is very nice, uh, zero point two knots. What's that? Correct, thank you. Oh, that's cool. You can maybe get one of those. Uh, Not yet? No. Nah. Okay. But again, yes. Oh, there's like a little the small fish right in the crack there. There it goes. Small fish. Small fish. Small fish. Or eel. So what's the oh, dominant, I barely see it. I, I, yeah, the dominant coral we've been seeing here? Seems like a lot of similar species that we're looking at. Go for zoom on this Coming small in. Fish. Zooming on the small fish, which is not a fish at <gasps> all. Oh my gosh. We've seen these. Oh, that's oh. an eel, yeah. Yeah. It's an eel. It looks like a needle. Try and make it harder for Jake to fly by zooming all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. No, did not like no, the lasers. No, I do <laughs> not want my picture taken today. Sneeze. What did y'all say this is? That looks like a, maybe a Paris. Oh, no, it's not a Paris. This is some type of eel I'm looking up now. Peace. I love it. 
that go out of frame. So the Hawaiian word for eel and is puhi. The general term for eel. Puhi. 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 I just got in the still camera too, yes. How do you spell and that? Little push in. Uh, something oh, above you to the right. I got name if that's also helpful. It's hollow sarida, sarida, H-A-L-O-S-A-U-R-I-D-A, E. Nice, thank you. Like halo, dinosaur, rida. <laughs> this seamount has all kinds of fun things to look at. I'm loving this. Okay. It's so diverse. I know. I think, and I think you might be. That muted. probably makes the most sense. <laughs> yeah. I, stay I love that we're the first ones looking at it. I know. It's so exciting. Yeah. I feel like we've had so many firsts this whole expedition. Wow. I feel so lucky to yeah. be a part of this. Right? It's like gratitude for what's mm -hmm. being revealed. Absolutely. Especially with the weather we've been having recently. Oh. Matt, Matt has been very lucky, yeah. Uh, I was going to try and tell you that every day that we dive is just like this and it's frequent for us to see three World War II aircraft carriers but there's no <laughs> way I could do that with this straight face <laughs> laugh. Well, it's been an amazing leg. I've heard that these waters are sometimes rough. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh man. Uh, uh, Dan Wagner and I came up here in... This is a great rock. Yeah. I don't remember the year. 2014 maybe? But like in January, wow. and <laughs> we we were we did like maybe six or seven dives in I think three weeks. Oh man! Yeah. Is this dive number six for us? Yeah. Yeah. Getting a still shot of this one. If I was a coral, yeah. I'd be on. We're this a little. Rock. Yeah, Definitely. I'll get it. That is beautiful. It's not the best on the lighting on the still cam, but I got yeah, it anyway. It's like the, this uh, rock has like every single organism type that we've seen so far on one rock. It is, is gorgeous. It's like the yeah. FTD deep sea bouquet. <laughs> I like that. It, I'm going to put deep sea bouquet in my yeah, there you go. for the highlight. Yeah. I need I to catch your description. name though. <laughs> There's no real holiday right around that one. Oh, I don't gosh. even know what month it is. is wow. September, megaphone? right? Yes. It looks like it. This is somewhat ridiculous. Oh my gosh, they made a comeback. <laughs> Wait, where's the megaphone? Can someone circle it? Is it up there? I don't know if it is, though. It's not a megaphone. Dang. It is a large megaphone, somewhat similar to shaped glass sponge, but the megaphone sponges are demo sponges, which have a different look to them. Okay, look at the very okay, bottom we, of the screen. Do you see the those like four yeah. clustered together? Like at the very, very bottom. Oh, I see those. What's that? Can we get a zoom in on that, actually? Where? Which one? At the very bottom of the this? screen, the four that are... To the nope, right, to the right. that. This? Or that yeah. one. Yep. Oh, oh, the four one. Yeah. It's like, um... Four it's like all the... Oh, oh, and then we've whoa. got, like, a tw 20 Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like all the instruments in, like, the, the, um... How the Grinch stole Christmas movie. <laughs> they're, like, all... The, they're all, like, move, yeah. actual move yeah, when you play them. Going in. I see wow. that. There's associate. Wow. Bounce around a bit. Two, yeah. maybe. Oh, yeah. And then going Looks full like zoom. Looks like there's polychaetes in the side. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about these is when I have a tough time focusing, you can't even tell. <laughs> yeah, we can. No, I'm kidding. We have a cheating monitor over here. I should show this to Tito sometime when we're better set up. That lets us know if we're in focus or not. I wonder what that tip, that long feature is with the red tip. Oh, right, right below it? I think it's yeah. something growing on it. Is something growing on it? 
Yeah, the red tip, I think, is not part of that. Yeah, it looks like it's with old mm -hmm. coral that anemone. some small anemone. anemone may have grown on. This guy be very small. Is this one dying out? Could be. Yeah. All right, coming out. Have we noticed any squat lobsters, like on our watch? I, like I, I have not uh, noticed any squat lobsters. I haven't noticed any. You're getting a big off of that here. Yeah, we reset. Yep. Okay. I'm not sure the corals are big enough, maybe? No, they're big enough. I'm willing to bet it's probably that they are harder yeah, to access on the DVO's terrible on that face, so they prefer to be on the slopes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like the only organisms we've seen is the... the, the I could just switch you to rap tail. USB instead of dead rap. Oh, yeah, the eel. Yeah. Right now it's... Big. And the eel. I forgot. And that worm. And the worm. And the worm. Mm -hmm. all, the, all, all those things. <laughs> Just everything. And there's another oh weird God, gap like, right there in biology. I just thought that little worm, it was like doing jazz hands. Like, like <laughs> jazz hand hands. Or salsa. Yeah. <laughs> there is a uh, type of Holothorian that when it comes off the bottom and swims uh, shows why it's called the Spanish dancer uh, mm. because it looks like it has you know that kind of long dress that's flowing around as it turns. Mm -hmm. Oh, like a uh, flamenco dancer. Yes. The Spanish dancer is actually a nudibranch. Uh, is it a nudie? It's a nudibranch. No kidding. Um, yeah, they are more in tropical waters, but they're also like there's a sim the deep sea cucumbers can kind of look like Spanish dancers when they're swimming, but they aren't technically Spanish dancers. Aren't we in the tropics? Bridge now. We, what's our, hold on, I got it right here. Uh, nope, we are not. We gotta be two degrees further south, right? <laughs> um, Isn't it 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south? I believe so. And they we, prefer bridge, tropical now. shallow water. We are scraping up. Move. One zero meters against two, the six, uh, international date line. Thank you. Uh, and if by mm -hmm. chance the vessel were to bump it or across the international date line, that would bring all of you guys into the realm of the Golden Dragon. Mm. Sounds like we have a mapping mission to well, build. It sounds like we should do that. <laughs> mapping systems do not get happy when you cross the date line. <laughs> uh, so it creates a lot of work for the mappers. Oh, I never even thought of that. It's kind of funny. Now, if we want to turn the mapping systems off and do a little John. <laughs> um, I'm I'm not going to advocate strongly for that, but I am in, when I come back because we will be crossing the equator very close to the. Uh, Dateline, and if I, we can nudge the ship over a little, that's a golden shellback. Oh, yeah, I've done that one before. Man, not uh, I've I've crossed, but not at not at the dateline. I think they called it a purple porpoise, but maybe I'm um, I'm censoring, but the um, <laughs> the the question is whether or not golden shellback is at 180 or at the dateline. Because a dateline is a political line that bounces all over the ocean, and we'll be, we'll definitely be crossing that. Right. Uh, just, we oh. also have a Sako in the science chat mentioning that we did see a squat lobster during the last shift. Ah. On t actually, on top of one of the primnoids that we collected. You have to consult with King Neptune, Ed. <laughs> well, unfortunately, the the best. King Neptune that ever lived just recently passed, and our dear, dear deck boss Mark, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, he was a fantastic deck boss, but more than anything, what a great King Neptune he was. We, uh, one of the first rules of Fight Club, <laughs> uh, yeah, just a great, great King Neptune. Great ship, mate. Why does the date line change? 
Uh, you mean why does it move for political? Mm -hmm. uh, so that, uh, like, uh, uh, various entities that may be a uh, protectorate or uh, part of a d another country stay on that same time zone. Um, like, so they don't cut yeah, if you, Micronesian half, for example, yeah. and have it all be tomorrow. Or if you look at, uh, yeah, like Arizona. Uh, Some, Samoa and American Samoa? Uh, Jarvis Island. And uh, strangely enough, uh, in the Marshall Islands, Kwajalein uh, Atoll, which is uh, home to the Ronald Reagan Ballistic Missile Test Range, they are on the other side of the international date line, so they work Tuesday through Saturday. To stay in line with their uh, continental based colleagues. Hmm. Okay, I understand now what a, what a date line is. It's like yeah, it's literally. Not it's not here. actually a, a line of uh, okay. longitude. It's uh, okay. you know, where the equator is actually a line of latitude. The it's international date line, I mean, it does exist as, uh, as longitude. It's the 180, yeah. uh, but it. We've, it, we've moved that around for political reasons, just so that, like, for example, um, American Samoa and Samoa are very close to the international date line. And a, a while ago, American Samoa uh, wanted to be closer to, or in the current, our time zone, the, the Hawaii era time zone, rather than in tomorrow, the, yeah, on I the other side, because up. they do business with America. Mm -hmm. Whereas Samoa wanted to stay near New Zealand on their time zone because they do most of their business with New Zealand. So they move the international date line to go right between them. And the other part of uh, Samoa is now actually independent Samoa. It used to be Western Samoa, but now it's independent Samoa. Uh, and Nautilus has uh, worked out of both uh, Pongo Pongo and the port of Apia. Thank you for explaining that. Mm -hmm. I I was it's, so confused. It's a, a time zone lobster. line. Oh, no, oh. never mind. It's a crane. Okay. No. Uh, it wasn't me. Okay. There's a time zone change by math. There's a fish or an eel. Bridge, nav. Every 15 degrees of longitude. And that one jogs all over yeah. the place. If you search for going in, zero meters bearing two Jarvis six, Island, J-A-R-V-I-S, uh, you'll Thank see you. the craziest Just date line tail. swirl. Very pretty one. That's a super healthy looking. Looks like this one's been eating good, staying healthy, living mm -hmm. its best life. When y'all uh, say healthy, like because of the size or like color? Um, typically, nope. rat tails have a little bit more of a, to have a palish color mm -hmm. and less of a shine. They're more of a matte color. This guy has a nice shine to him, which tells me he's eating healthy, producing a lot of slime on his scales likely having a really good high diet here in these very rich areas of the slope. And right. what would that diet consist of? Um, these guys are primarily the tritophores, so it's probably getting a lot of marine snow. Um, they probably eat smaller invertebrates as well. Um, so it's probably small pickings throughout that it just nipples on. Mm -hmm. It's a snack. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. That contrast with that beautiful, like, pink salmon is so beautiful. So at this point, we're kind of moving up this um, ridge crest up towards that flat area at waypoint two. Yeah, um, that is where. Yep, yeah, that's where we want to go. Still 200 meters away, just for yeah. reference. So we're stepping up there by 10 meter steps. Oh. And uh, let me know if you guys want to increase the size of the moves at the speed we're going. I mean, it seems like we're going at the the right pace for being, you know, safe operations up this slope and. Uh, sea star. Zooming on stuff. Sea we. Star. I mean, we haven't even sampled in our our watch yet. Um, that's almost as perfectly formed as that one we saw the other day. Uh, maybe not. The angle's a little off.
Oh, what's that purple thing right there? Sea cucumber? Yeah. Hall oh. or yeah, it's too big for noodles. What are you circling? Well, I don't know. Oh, this is a key. <laughs> I thought you were looking at another rock. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Quick zoom. I was trying to look yes, for please. the purple. Quick zoom. Oh, there, it, there is. it is. I was about to say, I Hello. can't see it. It is a cucumber. Pretty colored. Is it moving? Slightly. It looks like it's lifting its head towards us. <laughs> He's not exactly in the most optimal oh, place. Oh, look, he is. Hello. Hello. Is that its mouth? I believe that would be its mouth. Whoa. So these guys feed primarily on sediment and process sediment right through their body to get the tritus from in between the individual grains and then excretes them as clean sediment. So they're important recyclers of detritus and carbon in our ecosystems on the seafloor. And in Hawaii, they help to create such clean sand. It's one of those gross factors for kids when I tell them that the lole or this, the sea cucumber actually takes the sand in, cleans it, and then poops out clean sand. <laughs> kids love that. I just like how you phrased it, that it poops out clean sand. Oh, it was a shadow. Oh. Only babies work that way. Like, Zoom in on the shadow, please. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Can we sample that shadow? <laughs> yeah, turn the lights off. <laughs> yeah, if we have an empty uh, slurp, uh, let's just label it as shadow. <laughs> that could baffle the... Uh, that uh, sponge looks like the top left is dying. Oh, like right here? Yeah, I think that's dying. That doesn't look like the tritus. So for those of you just joining us, we are in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, the largest marine protected area in the United States, um, considered an aina akua, a realm of the deities, of the gods, a place where life begins for Kanaka O'ivi, Native Hawaiians, and the place where we return to after death into Po the realm of the ancestors. So welcome, as we see for the first time with human eyes, the depths of this um, unnamed seamount in the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands. What are all these? Do you see so that huge baby, coral to the left baby coral. Oh. Not coral, sponge, sorry. Sponge? This? Wait, that's the right. No, it's off screen. Oh. To the left. Somewhere. What are all, are those all corals? Bridge Those now. are all mushroom corals. Oh, I thought they were all like crinoids or something. That's a strange um, group of Could them. Please huh? do a ship move. One zero meters, bearing two five six. They all look like babies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next to these big yeah. ones. I didn't even notice them. We've collected several of them, actually. We actually have one, I believe, in the sampler right now. In one of the oh. Or in the four box, sorry. What do y'all put the samples in? What liquid is that? Um, we normally put them in um, uh, ethanol. Ninety-five percent ethanol. Because I noticed that some of the color is coming off of the the organism. Yeah, that happens. But with oh, ethanol, really? Mm -hmm. huh. it makes them lose their more biological. Yes. One zero meters. Um, cat Thank you. components kind of fade away and make them colorless. Hmm. If you want to preserve color and that oh. kind of stuff, you need formalin. And there's another rat tail. <coughs> but yeah, um, ethanol is really good for preserving um, eDNA. Okay. And D DNA, oh. but formalin can preserve morphology better. I was just curious because I went in there to look at my rocks and I was like, whoa, the color is off of this coral and it's now the water is like a light orange. Huh. 
Yeah, you have to replace it. Well, after I guess not water, it's ethanol. Yeah, you have to replace the formalin over the first couple of days that you preserve an, an organism because it keeps them releasing those components into the surrounding liquid. So you have to replace it or else it goes bad. Mm. And after a few days, it just becomes permanent and there's no more thinking to change. So as we're talking about sampling, um, I know that in the permit process, there are um, limits as to how many samples um, can be taken out of Papahana Mokoekea. I'm just wondering, is there some kind of best management practices for um, researchers in regards to sampling and the kind of judicious choosing so that you're not overtaking? Or um, I'm just curious as to if there's conversations regarding that. Give me one second. Sorry, my computer's acting a little weird. I can't log at the moment. Uh, on capture? Oh, there we go, got back. Um, okay. So to answer your question, Leah, um, so we take a lot, of, there's a, lot, a really good best practice is to not take an organism I'm unless it's there. absolutely uh, sure, sure we're not, it's novel or it's oh, yeah. under the request of a specific study. Which is part of the crinoid. crinoid. Yes, that's a crinoid. That's a different one, though. It has a very black center to it. I accidentally did. Purple, yeah. almost. I've dealt with this once, but I forget what I did. I tried to do back. Oh, now I have it. Uh, <laughs> well, now I need to fix it, so. Uh. Oh, no. Seems like we're all having technical problems. Oh yeah, hit, come on, hit the bottom out. right button a couple times. The select? Yeah. Full wide, little push. One more. One more. Uh, One more. No, that was it. Help check. There it is. Oh, okay. That was close. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really do much. So <laughs> yes, Malia, um, expanding, continuing off your question. Um, yeah, so we don't, it's, ideally we don't collect unless we are sure that it's novel to science or if it's under the request of one of our scientists ashore for, for one of their studies. Um, so it's That's very much fun. take what you need, no more. And is probably the best practice for these deep sea pristine environments. And then also um, all of the samples are um, preserved according to uh, standard operating protocols and uh, sent to biological and geological repositories so that they can be archived and documented there. And then not only the scientists who have requested them, but anyone um, can request data on those samples, um, subsamples, come study them, that sort of thing. So it's not like, you Rage know, now. one person's asking for it to take home. Push it's on like, that. Yeah. It's all of the samples are available to for scientific study. Uh, ship move, please. Yeah, like me. One zero meters bearing two seven zero. She's, she's gonna have rocks in her in her suitcase on the way home. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that though. No, okay. they're they're all going to the University of Rhode Island's mm -hmm. repository. So where are those repositories? So the geology one is the Rock and Core Lab at uh, the Graduate School of Oceanography in in Rhode Island. Oh, you can Com come on. Coming out slow. And. Um, the biology one is the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard. Wow. Maybe our editor can use that. Also named Jake. Mm -hmm. On the very inside of that sponge, was that uh, like a part of the sponge that's dying or was that associate? That actually looks just like sediment. Yeah, that's oh, just okay. stuff that's falling in there. Yeah, just stuff that's from the sediment above falling into a yang trap. Like dust falling into a tuba. Is your tether fully extended <laughs> right now? Yeah. Or like These are the days of our lives. So we need to catch up with you a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bump forward towards the towards okay. the wall. I just put in a ten meter move okay. towards towards the wall. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Yeah. It's nice though when we're like this on the wall, like extended out. Okay. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> I 
I have to say it is nice to see this kind of vivid colors again after the uh, the very blue video that we yeah. were able to obtain yeah. last few days. That uh, that raw video, I was able to post process some samples, and uh, uh, once you correct color contrast and lighting, you, there was so much detail we weren't actually seeing during really? the dive. Sounds like a rich that, treasure trove for later. And it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see some of that. Yeah. Um, one of the clips I tested was when we were looking down into the elevator on the uh, flight deck of the Yorktown. Oh, yeah. And uh, in cleaning that up, you could see just almost every item that was down on that deck below. Really? And we could, you, when you look at the uncorrected, you can't see any of it. Wow. Cool. That's pretty awesome. Anything of note inside? Uh, it looked like a ladder, a paint bucket, and uh, what was the other thing we were saying we saw all the time? The paint cans? Yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, don't tell Hans that. No, that's why I was saying Just a ladder, because I was seeing oh, ladders yeah, yeah. everywhere. <laughs> uh, I thought there's a third thing we kept thought we were seeing. Uh, no, I don't recall. I was more interested in the the image quality than the content. Yep. That's not gotcha. my subject matter expertise. Mm -hmm. Although one of, the, one of the life experiences I have that uh, has served me well, not only for running fibers and cables throughout vessels, but also in archeology span dives, was I got to, with my dive club over the course of several years, uh, participate in the decommissioning of the Canadian Naval Destroyer Annapolis and preparing it to become a dive site. So we tore everything out of that vessel. And so it really shows you how boats are put together and uh, made the different parts. Uh, uh, any, you know, if you're hanging a television on the wall in your house, you can run a cable through a wall on a vessel, they're all solid steel. And anytime we have what we call a cable penetration, it is sealed to be uh, waterproof and usually fireproof. Bridge nav. Yeah, outcrop over uh, there? Yeah. One zero meters bearing three zero zero. Thank you. Dirk, how far up does this thing rise from the seafloor? The mountain itself? Yeah. The seamount is roughly 4,000 meters vertical relief wow. from the seafloor. Wow. It's a big one. That's the amazing thing about deep water multi beam mapping is you can map That's like an, an entire oprite. mountain in about a day, a uh, 24 hour. <laughs> uh, something you don't get that kind of coverage in shallow water. Your footprint's much smaller. With yeah. You, if you think about it, it feels like it's the opposite that you would need to go over deep water more, but it's just. You know, that because you need, uh, it's so deep you need better resolution, but that's not how, how the multi-beam works. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm not aware, and it's probably just having not worked with them, of any autonomous vehicles that are really good at, you know, uh, imaging the shape of a feature like this. What do you mean? Well, like, uh, an autonomous underwater vehicle like Sentry uh, is good at seafloor, but I don't know if it can do side looking, you know, oh, give you the shape yeah. of this. <laughs> Gliders uh, certainly are not well skilled at that. And then autonomous surface vessels have no advantage over our hull mounted uh, mapping systems. Yeah, a lot of the current solutions are good for flat bottom yeah, stuff. Yeah, but something that is actually like forward looking depth. or side looking yeah. that could give you, you know, the contours, the vertical contours. Tours. It's just so difficult because you can't plan for something like as variable as a C-mount. Right. 
So it's you can't really path plan that. It would have to be fully autonomous where right. it's, de it's de deciding itself where to go. So that's where things get tricky. Well, couldn't it always stay, you know, four meters off, keep it Can off to its right? Can we get a zoom on that skinnier glass sponge in front of us? Yeah. Thank you. Skinnier? Yeah, right sponge. where your lasers are. Yeah, right where your lasers are. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a little closer. Yeah. All right, go for zoom, Ed. Coming in. Oh, I think this. Hmm. Is this a uh, a winner? It's very very close. Um, oh. Can I get a quicker zoom in? Uh, I believe this is one. Okay. I'm making the call. If we can collect it, whatever piece you can get is great. All right. Let me see if I can set up for this. What's below you? Can you get a toe in on that little ledge, yeah. maybe? Right. Maybe. Miss Malia and Tori, do y'all have the sample sheet, the target? Yeah. Team? Okay, it's, it's on the... I was literally just about to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah, it? it's on the second... Can I do another push before yeah, we... Yeah, second to uh, last. Once yeah, she gets set, set up. Yeah. Top. Oh. Just to ensure... Top left. We still want no it. No problem. Uh, Sebastian, just confirming that the sample would be 45, is that correct? Um, give me one sec. It should be 45. Just gonna push and stick lock. Make sure I'm steady. I think it's going to be hard not to wag. Do you guys have a preference for slurp or... Can I go uh, in? Go in. Go on in. Uh, let's get my focus first. How uh, brittle is a sponge like this? Or is it, like, squishy? I do not know. I imagine it's... Kind of squishy. Do you think it's uh, Slurpable. floaty? Yeah, I think it looks a little floaty. Okay. So it's probably like Coming a full small wide. slurp? I would say slurp. That's full, full wide. Sorry, i got to reset up here. view of Hercules from the Atalanta camera. You can really get more context for I wonder how my zoom is over here now. How the pilot's kind of holding the vehicle at the edge of the cliff, basically. Doing a push on your camera, Tito. I'm trying to I hit the wrong this. button. <laughs> <laughs> and coming out. And coming out full wide. Thanks for pointing out that Atalanta view, Derek. It's really cool to see. That's a wow. Maybe yeah, sometimes a you lose perspective just looking yeah. at Hercules, and it's nice to step back and kind of get the big picture of just how rough this terrain is that we're transiting up. On some legs, there's a preference for that tow sled camera to be zoomed mm -hmm. almost all the way in. So we have on our other tow sled a forward facing caught the dash cam that the pilots can use for tether management while we're zoomed all the way in on that stuff. Ugh. Uh, is there a current that's pushing you off? To yeah, I don't know. Having trouble. I thought I was I had it before, but I hit the wrong button. Hmm.
Do you see that organism just at the left part of frame? I do. Is, okay, it's just teasing you? Yes, it is. But this is a higher priority target. <laughs> I thought it was a coral base at first, but not with those lines across it. A worm of some sort. Yeah, it'll definitely look like an annelid to me. All right, let's try this here. Uh, we need starboard off, bucket on. Okay. And which canister are we going for? We're going for slurp one. S slurp one, I. RV, starboard bucket. There we go. Set three. Bucket. What's browsing? <coughs> Gonna go here in uh, bucket number one. We're gonna slurp it. Can you both stick lock and auto heading? Yeah. I'm gonna step away for two seconds so you guys find something to sample. Ugh. What? I said the good thing is we're turn. still trying to, you haven't missed a slurp yet. You oh no, that's, that's for sure good. It is a little bit of a tough spot. Definitely. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like, a mountain climber trying to hold steady well to set some protection and <laughs> hammer in the next pizza on. <laughs> Precarious. Yeah, but it, if Herc falls, he's neutrally buoyant. <laughs> That's good. He's on belay. Oh. Jake, do you want to uh, maybe consider resetting over on these? You know what I mean? There's just too much coral in there. Yeah, I know. Maybe this little like lip right here. Tito, is it possible to center up our view onto Hercules? Thank you. Thanks. All right, can you hit the stick lock for me, Derek? Which one? The right, it's the right button all the way on the right. This on the joy box? Right here. Yeah, right there. See if that'll hold for... Yeah. Yeah. 
can't. I'm having trouble holding with the lateral on the wall. How critical is this sample? If it's too hard for you guys, we can move on. It's fine. I feel like this coral is expert level, sponge is expert level. It shows just the right spot to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Definitely brittle. That should be enough of a sample for us. Oh, that piece is floating away. Oh, oh no. It's almost like very like foamy looking. It's a slurp pack. Oh. So close. Yes. Yay. Good job, Jake. Is that awesome. enough of a sample? Uh, I'm waiting for it to come in the slurp jar. Is it even in, is it in there? Oh, yeah. Let's see. One little, piece. one little piece. I see it going through in the background. It just moved up the hose. Okay, there we there go. There it is, sample collected. That should be enough. <clears throat> Thank you guys. Awesome job. Still full, full white. So that's confirmation of sample 45. Yeah, under a thousand. hydraulic pressure an issue we need to it's just it's tough when it seems to be the laterals when we're it's a known trying to hold on the hold <clears throat> when you demand too much flow pressure drops <clears throat> and uh, it's dropping a little bit more than usual it's not something that this if it's been a ever going ongoing problem this season. But we're troubleshooting, trying different things every dive, and slowly making progress. It's a little bit better than it was a couple dives ago. All right, uh, if you guys are ready for a move, maybe I'll try 310 and try to bring us towards that. Yeah. Stay along the ridge. All right. Okay. Ridge nav. Ship move, please. One zero meters, bearing three one zero. Thank you. So this is our very first time ever looking at or exploring the seamount before. 
Um, and I'm curious, do we know um, maybe like why this area specifically, this ridge, was chosen for this dive today? I think there were a couple of factors. One being that it had never been mapped or dived on. I mm -hmm. mean, that's that is that just makes something a high priority. Uh, it's a geo, as uh, as Hannah was saying earlier, which is a you know a type of geological feature that uh, a lot of people are interested in. Uh, and in addition, <coughs> it's uh, one of the farthest. It's on the far edge of Papahanaumokuakea. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think the the well, we could probably measure, but, you know, we're just a few miles, I think, from the boundary. Um, you know, and so access out here is, is difficult. So we, we try we want to try to get to ones while we're in the area that are going to be harder to get to for yeah. other ships from from NOAA or from the Hawaiian Islands. You know, while we're out here, we take advantage of that. Um, yeah. So I think because we were coming out to the to the midway sites, um, since we're all the way out here, we, we were trying to sense. trying to emphasize the uh, the seamounts that that need work, and, and this you know ones that haven't even been mapped are are certainly high on that list. Yeah, and so then after we made the map, um, how was the specific path for this dive? Like, how do we de determine like which part of the geo were we gonna like focus on? So we had a little science meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. Uh, Val and myself, uh, Megan and Daniel, the, the expedition leaders, uh, and Derek and, and Rennie were down there, as well as um, Virginia for, for the biology side. Um, and we were just kind of looking at um, which which parts of it would be ne uh, the best to, to find exposed corals and uh, the, the sort of rocks that would tell us uh, the history, the geological history of the seamount. Um, and also that would be doable in the, you know, in about a 24 hour dive, mm -hmm. which is usually around four kilometers. Uh, and then also, um, you know, what's feasible for navigation. Like you don't want to go up a sheer cliff, but you also don't want to go over like just a all flat sediment. Um, so all those factors were taken into account. And I mean, there's, there's a, you know, a whole bunch of ways we could have gone up it, but, uh. This one was interesting because it was a ridge on the side so of that collapse. Trying to find this ridge instead of so uh, this one. Yeah, the <laughs> slope failure. Okay. Yeah, the slope failure. So there were kind of multiple things that we could look at here. And we almost always go from low to high. So yeah, so yeah, ROV transits go low to high because of the way the, uh, the ROV is set up. You really can't see... Oh, right. With the camera kind of like mi middle of the ROV, mm -hmm. you really can't see anything going downhill. So, uh, yeah, we always translate deep to deep to shallow. Um, yeah, when I was looking at the the final uh, mapping of the Geo, I was really interested in the the slope failure. It yeah. looks like a huge crater. It for does, yeah. People who can't see the the big picture map, mm -hmm. and that's I can see why Val would want to go along that ridge just to see what happened, or maybe if the rocks can say something about what happened in the slope failure and the crater forming. Nice. Thank you for that explanation, and uh, I want to also recognize that we've got people of all ages, all kinds of experience listening in and tuning into these live streams. And we've got even Miss Blakemore's class that's watching. And we've got a ton of future explorers out there that are listening and getting a chance to like hear what's going on, how these decisions are made and explore right along with us. And I encourage y'all to send in questions about what we're doing, about anyone we've got in the control van. Um, and it's nice to have y'all with us. Yeah, no, that makes me so happy that so many young explorers or people of any age just so curious about what we do. Mm -hmm. It just makes me, makes my heart happy. <laughs> I had a vendor <laughs> tune in yesterday and uh, they were reading our website and they're originally from Hilo in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And they sent in, I'll have to share the email with uh, Malia and some shipmates, just an amazing message about uh, the participation and recognition of 
uh, Hawaiian culture and mm -hmm. us doing protocols uh, really touch them. Yeah, and you know, that's just, you know, part of the work that we do at Papahanao Mokoakea is really weaving um, Kanako o Iwi or Native Hawaiian um, knowledge and practices into all of the work that we do um, from management to research to education to outreach. Um, we are in an indigenous space and we honor those deep connections that Kanako o Iwi have maintained to Papahanao Mokoakea, you know, for, you know, at least a thousand years. Mm. And so um, that is just such an important part of everything Can that we get we do. a zoom in of that glass sponge right under the Christ floor, did? Sure thing. Zoom. Mahalo, Ed. Coming in. Mm. Yeah, thank you, for, Maria, for just like, you know, oh, sharing that cool. insight. Because we have people that, hmm? I'm just always reminded oh, this may be the very first time idea. that oh, they've no. learned <laughs> a couple of numbers trying to get more or even mm. heard just like oh. that there are marine <laughs> national monuments and... Um, there could be. So it could be. I need to look at the top of it. The top of it. All right. <laughs> Jake's like, how am I going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> what, Is that up? a poor angle? I He's like, aware. you need to look at the top. These sponges oh, okay. are testing us today. <laughs> There's some really good uh, shots in the uh, still camera, though. That's not the same one, is it? That's no, it's not. Forgiving <laughs> angle. <laughs> Cheater. You're like, is that saw radio? It's right? not cheating if it works. Yeah. It's not cheating if it works. That's not a good statement at all. <laughs> is that that's, wow, that's a long stock? All's well that ends well. It's only an island if you look at it from the water. Mm -hmm. What movie is that from anybody? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Jaws. Because yeah. oh. Brody's afraid of the water. He's like, mm. that doesn't make sense for someone who lives on an island. He goes, it's only an island <laughs> if you look at it from the water. And then Hooper goes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I love that movie. Have you read the book? Yeah, it's not as good as the movie. I oh, mean, really? It, it is good, but the movie... Um, I love the book. The, the book's good, but the, the, the uh, movie, just they, they get the character. They just the best they can do for you, Sebastian. Um, can we get a zoom, please? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's tough because we're trying to match the speed, the sponge to, to yeah. the printout we have to see if it's something we need to There's sample. There's an associate oh. on the back side on the left. So you, if you look down in the bubble camera, you can kind of oh. see down into it. Uh, oh. Yeah, I see oh. the top. Where is it? It's got two different There's chambers. Two. Oh, is this the ET sponge? Here, I can put it on the top left for oh, a second if I take well, I can't Tito's away. It because it's, it's oh. the bottom. Uh, that bottom. one. There you go. Right. Up there. Oh, up there. I don't think it's the same as this. Yeah, yeah I don't think so either. Oh. Yeah. Also, that was two Steven Spielberg references in 60 seconds. <laughs> All right, we're good to um, move on. You Thank you, guys. The one? My class learned about ET sponges on the last <laughs> expedition. We saw some like really fun pictures, and I've been looking for them. All right, lift it off. So I was thinking ahead and do west 270, or what do you guys think? 270. Oh. Looks like Tito's squared up on the heading yeah. that heading right now, and. You know okay. what, Tori? I just looked up a picture of it, and I can see. <laughs> it I can is. see how that could be it. And I think that totally was one. Yeah. I'm excited. I don't know. Usually these guys have the holes on the sides. Ridge This guy didn't have it on the top. That's a pretty distinct morphology from each other. Can we do a move, please? Well, as one a, I guess zero as a meters bearing 270. I would have thought zero. that it also was an ET sponge. Thank you. Well, but, that but also, to go back to what Miss Malia was saying before we got yes. cut off, 
I really appreciated the the dance, the hula. That was my first time I've ever seen a hula. Yeah. And it Me was too. it was so beautiful. Yeah, so you know hula is a it's a living archive um, of Hawaiian culture, of our language, of our history. Um, it's not just a dance, but it's a lifestyle. And, um, you know, we did the hula, so myself and three of the other Kanaka OEV women on board to honor um, the lives that were lost in the Battle of Midway, um, our American and Japanese sailors and airmen. And it was just a very appropriate time as we finished up that last dive on the Kaga, um, the remains of the Kaga. And it was perfect. It was sunset. It was the night of Kane um, in the Hawaiian lunar phase. Um, Kane is a very sacred night. Um, and it has to do with, you know, sol being solemn and offering prayers. It has to do with death and rebirth. And so um, that we were able to honor through hula on a very most appropriate lunar night um, was just this wonderful alignments that happen sometimes, you know, and as we do our cultural protocol and um, looking at the world through a Hawaiian perspective, um, these alignments can't really explain it from a scientific perspective, but from a Hawaiian perspective, it's all meant to be and incorporates our emotional, spiritual, physical, um all of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no it was it was so beautiful and it was so emotional and powerful i loved i loved watching it yeah i think well, it was like just so special for so many of us to be part of and i know that's like one part of this experience that like i'll look back on yeah i'm so glad that we were able to do that yeah and that, you know, the Fish weather was there. fabulous yeah. and, and um, all of you were able to join us because I really think it was after all the, the heaviness, the kaumaha of diving on these wrecks, I think it was the most appropriate time for that healing, you know, to happen. So, all meant to be. And actually, right, like, probably soon after, we saw... Is this the a, shark? Yeah, we saw yeah. The, the huge shark. Yeah. Wait, yep. what? Yeah, we yeah. saw like a, a massive like on the like surface. Shark. Yeah. On the yeah, surface. Yeah, it was on the surface. Right yeah, on when? the starboard side. Like right, right after. after right after. Right after the hula. We were just outside. Yeah. Oh. It was beautiful. What type was it? We, uh, were, we didn't see. Sure. We didn't see a white tip. So maybe like a mako, but I don't it know. It wasn't a tiger. No. Uh, not mm. was. Did anyone get a photo? That. Uh, uh, Megan might have. Megan's the one that spotted it. Yeah. A hamper header, a camera right, out I'll as well. I'll have to ask her, because uh, I, I might be able to identify it. And one for of us is a type of holosaurida that we saw earlier. Somewhere in the genus. Yeah. A lot of species look very similar, so I can't quite tell. Yeah, coming outside for the shark, that was, oh, it was so good. It was so eerie. It was yeah. so eerie for me to watch because that was the first time, like, I saw a shark, like, in the wild that, like, I was on a boat. Yeah, me too. And because I've seen one from, a, like, from the beach, I've seen them, mm -hmm. but not not like that. That was, yeah. it gave me chills. It's hard to estimate size from the boat, but to me it looked like it was maybe 8 to 10 feet long, something like Whoa. that. And so from a Hawaiian perspective, those are called ho'ailona. You know, those are like um, environmental kind of clues or um, indicators, indicators um, you know, that talk about what's sharks. going on mm -hmm. is like confirmed by the gods, especially since we're here in Papahanaumokuakea. You know, these kind of um, indicators from the natural environment and from the ancestors is really something that's welcomed from a Hawaiian perspective and kind of a confirmation that what occurred with the hula, with that intention of honoring, was accepted and that the ancestors were pleased with what occurred. So, ho'ailona. We also had great atmospheric conditions that caused the sky to be filled with small puffy clouds, but they were also flat-bottomed 
Does that make sense? The bottom of them was not, mm -hmm. so it looked like they were sitting on an invisible shelf or something. Mm. It's very cool. Yeah, so recently I was like looking at the clouds and I was like, why do they all have flat bottoms? Yeah, I think. So should we just hold here until he comes it's back? It's like an inversion or something. Like you ever, uh, it's the it's opposite of when you see like somebody's yeah. smokestack go up from their house and mm -hmm. it just like stops going up yeah, and spreads. I, it was, I think it was something like that. Yeah, that I read, I was reading and it was something along the lines of there's an equilibrium point um, between temperature and something else. Humidity, maybe? Maybe, maybe. That sounds right. But it, it, that's what it was talking so, uh, about. Atmospheric uh, thermocline. heading around or not from where you're sitting Probably. right now? Oh, the, almost. I'm sorry. Yeah. So we that happens over uh, between the saddle between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. Oh. They have that inversion it layer. Like it's coming on and it creates actually. these very cool atmospheric conditions. We're good. Oh. I don't know exactly what causes so it, but I'm thinking the cold okay. and then, you know, this you. piling up of, of temperature and things like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a really funny story about me <laughs> visiting Mauna Kea <laughs> on the Big Island. So Do you have a suggestion here? We went for so a field trip just came a and it was actually with Dr. Val and it was right that. after we went okay, to Kona and we went scuba so far, not scuba diving, yeah. snorkeling. And so I was like I had shorts and like beach attire on and we decided let's go to Mauna Kea. <laughs> and so we get there Good luck we with see that. I know, I know. <laughs> we get there and it's we see snow and I'm like, oh my god, I am not wearing I'm wearing flip I'm wearing Birkenstocks too. Like I'm not oh. even wearing like proper footwear. <laughs> I just remember like running to the uh the gift store and just like grabbing the sweatpants and just like the sweatpants I'm wearing literally right now and just like putting them on over my shorts. And I was just like grabbing all this, all these clothes because I was freezing, and I was like, did not expect yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. Come up <laughs> right now, <man. laughs> I was like, honestly, that is great, like sure what's doing, uh, merchandise to like sell. Kind of the they like this, sold like all, yeah. all type of gear. winter gear. I was like, this is yeah, they because they were expecting <laughs> tourists to come up yeah. with their shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> I was you're not a tourist, you're a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea there there was no in Hawaii when I when I showed up. We went to Hale, uh, Mount Haleakala on uh, uh, Maui and same thing. It was like, oh, it's freezing here. Wait, this is Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, you hit those upper elevations. Woo! I, think it's just yeah. I was surprised when we all, uh, met many of the people coming out to see this here, especially our science communication fellows, met in Rhode Island in March. And so I have shipmates from Guam and Samoa and Hawaii, and uh, they show up with these giant puffy jackets. And I'm like, where do you buy that jacket mm -hmm. in the tropics? <laughs> most, of them, uh, most of them were actually from previous trips to San Francisco or wherever. Or you borrow. So a lot of times yeah. we'll borrow from family because, you know, that's just how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody always has snow gear. And swinging around again. My uh, Seems to definitely be current. Right. auntie and uncle who live in Kaneohe on Oahu uh, always liked to visit we'll us back head, east uh, in the dead of winter uh, just uh, to see the weather. Summer. Yeah, wow. that makes sense Yeah, to it's you. nice yeah. to visit, but I don't know if I could live in that. <laughs> I'm spoiled by Hawaii. Uh, Bridge, well, yeah. Nav. Earlier you said a word, and I don't remember what... It was. Or was it the Hawaiian word for shark? Mano. Mano. Okay. I heard something else, and I don't remember what it was. I think it maybe started with an L. And Bridge, I was ask you to huh. Repeat it. Mm. Can we please do a ship move 10 do meters you know bearing 240? <laughs> a sign? Ho'ai Thank you. Ho yeah, I think maybe. Ho'ai Lona, the sign. Um, it's kind of a physical environmental manifestation oh that's interesting change in color oh, i have a ship to shore almost forgot i have one <laughs> at six and i have one at seven okay well i'm gonna hop off have fun. Me when i come back and maybe y'all will see i don't know what 
Is that <gasps> encrusting that? organism? Do you see the difference in the rock color? Hannah, can you possibly explain why the sediment, the substrate got darker here on the left with yeah. more corals? Is that a older flow two compared two to a younger flow, maybe? I think it's growth. It's 240. 240? It's greenish. Yeah. Roger. Hold Green. on one, one second. Hey, uh, Herc, there's a like something in, in the very bottom left of our camera. Can you get that out of there, maybe? I think it's a glare. Uh, yeah. That's clear? Because we're looking downward, aren't we? Huh, okay. Yeah, yep, lens flare. Okay, yeah, just keep it zoomed in a little bit past so we don't have that in the, in the photos. Mm hmm Thanks. We have to push in anyway because the camera's not centered in the housing. Wait, what did you say again, Sebastian, about the color of the rocks? Can I zoom? The ones with the corals yeah. on it have darker, oh. while the ones with that sparse right are lighter. There. It's so that, is that material. So is that of age of the lava flow? Coming out. That's a sponge. Wait. Isn't oh, yeah. that a green growth on those rocks? Oh, the green. Oh, okay. I understand. So the green growth, oh. we're not sure what that is yet. Because I asked Val about it, and she, she's like, well, we have theories about what it could be, but it, we're uh, not sure. Are you feeling more current, Jay? It just yeah. looks oh, a lot yeah. murkier but, all yeah. of a sudden, like we're I don't, you know, yeah, a I'm lot more sure. flow. It definitely come up. Yeah, the vehicles are also tending north of the ship. And you wonder if, like, this is, like, hitting the current, so it's all kind of sticking onto there and not really falling onto the Mind other, if I but I don't know. This. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, because yeah. there's, like, a line of demarcation even on the left side there uh -huh. where it ends. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I was thinking. Cause, and there's also like no life over here, so it makes me think that the current is only reaching right. that area. Right. Corals are a good long-term current indicator. Mm-hmm. Are there usually like multiple different currents happening at in one area or I don't know. How do y'all keep track of the current when y'all are doing the ROV moving Hercules? Uh, uh, what we tend to do is we don't have anything that <clears throat> like any sensors that measure the current, but if uh -huh. we just like let go of the sticks, the thrusters and just mm -hmm. let it let it float, we can get an idea of oh. how the current's going and then what we have to do to combat it, like how much thrust. Mm. Cool. I didn't know. Yeah, the ROV is probably more alike a uh, kite than a car. I think I'll do the same move again. Yeah. Bridge, nav. Ship move, please. One zero meters bearing two four zero. We're so close to wave point two. Which is the, it looks like the top of this ridge. That's right, yeah. And we'll have sort of a somewhat flat section to traverse. And that'll be where the next rock comes in. Or. I heard during Val's watch, they call it rock o'clock, and I was like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> rock o'clock. The corals and sponges are getting significantly larger. This must be a very high current nutrient oh, area. That wasn't intentional. Sorry, I had downlights on. Oh, that was you. Okay. Yep. 
I thought that was one of my iris jumps. <laughs> nope. Not that time. Even less intentional. Mm -hmm. Have we done any Niskins yet this dive? We've already done two. Okay. Um, I'm kind of rationing the other four until we get higher up on the map. <laughs> rationing. Mm -hmm. We only have six. We don't want to use them all immediately. Yeah, Derek, we're, we might have to chat with uh, expedition leads when they get up and see if they want to extend this route. We're not making as much headway along the route as uh, I think we've been a little optimistic. Yeah, I agree with you. You need to add a sub Sebastian factor into your speed calculations. No, no, no. This, how much, um, this is the last two watches. They didn't uh, get anywhere. Okay. I'm curious how much like vertical um, way have we made? Not you know, well, we started at 2260. Because we've basically been just been coming up. We haven't been making any. It's only yeah. been 200 meters, huh? There's about 600 meters of vertical difference between waypoint one and two. Uh, obviously, yeah, we're not at waypoint two yet, but we're getting we're getting further up. So we've probably done about 400 meters vertical. Uh, I mean, no, I can speed up yeah. if if we want to do that, and the pilots are comfortable with with it. Yeah, if that's what. I mean, I don't know that we really should be going any faster against these walls. I mean, we could bump up to point three. We're yeah. going point two, but okay. okay. And I can put in the increments more frequently. I've been doing about every five minutes. Yeah. I'm gonna do. Every three minutes or four minutes? I don't think it works underwater. Maybe it does, but it'd be cool if uh, the tow sled had some sort of like LiDAR sensor that revealed overhangs and stuff. looks like a cornucopia. That's what someone was calling um, the megaphone ones. Oh. Who was calling it that? I don't know. It certainly wasn't me. Someone, he, no, someone here was calling them that. I'm from Philadelphia and that's an unpronounceable word to Philadelphia. Can we do a hit move please? One zero meters bearing two four zero and at a speed of zero point three knots. Thank you. Who's our um? Who's There's our Paul? Paul. Paul. Hmm. Paul is my favorite Uruguayan on the boat. <laughs> Don't tell Diego though, but Diego's my favorite ETO on the boat. Is Paul the one who was like eating breakfast when we were getting ready to come out? Uh, I didn't really notice. I brought breezed right through there. I don't think so. Okay. I didn't see him in there. Hmm. I'm not sure I know who he is. So for those of you who are just joining us, we are on Expedition NA-154. The name of the expedition is Ala Aumawana Kayuli which means the path of the deep sea traveler. And we are currently on an unnamed sea mount uh, northwest of Holaniku. Holaniku, um, the name, I'm gonna share a little bit with you because names have power. Um, the name Holaniku means bringing forth heaven. And it's a single name that stands alone, corresponding to the location of Kure Atoll at the very end of our Hawaiian archipelago. This name is used in many different contexts to describe the homeland of gods, such as Kane and Kanaloa, our god of the sea. Another name for Polaniku is Mokupa Papa, literally means flat island, which was ascribed to Kure Atoll by Hawaiian kingdom officials in the 19th century when King David Kalakaua sent an envoy to the atoll to take formal possession on behalf of the Hawaiian kingdom. This atoll was born 28 million years ago from the same hot spot 
that is currently fueling the eruptions of Kilauea and last year Mauna Loa on Hawaii Island. Holaniku is the eldest island in the Hawaiian archipelago and is an oval-shaped atoll about six miles wide at its maximum, maximum diameter. Holaniku is the north, northernmost coral atoll in the world, placing it at the Darwin Point. So scientists theorize that where coral growth occurs at a slower rate than the subsidence of the atoll, the atoll will sink below the surface with no further possibility of a coral connection. Holaniku's coral is still growing slightly faster than the island is subsiding or sinking. Further north and west, the Emperor Sea Mounts foretell the future of the atoll and really all of the Hawaiian archipelago. The sea mounts lie in water too deep and cool for coral growth. So as Holaniku continues its slow migration atop the Pacific plate, it too will eventually slip below the surface. I think I'm tugging it too. I think I'm, I think. Thanks, Malia. And just to uh, clarify a little bit, yeah, I'm definitely um, tugging it. Yeah. that's referencing um, reef building corals that are in shallow water, because obviously we're seeing deep water deep corals water here, corals. but are, yep. that's a separate, uh, completely separate thing that wouldn't form an atoll. Okay, so do you want to keep moving up then? Yes. Yeah. Just look at the distance. This keeps Rich on going now. for a while. This might be an easy Same question. Same move as last time, please. Sebastian, One zero meters, uh, bearing two four what zero. What is the main difference between at a speed of zero point three like knots? Shallow water corals and deep water corals. Thank you. I would say primarily the presence or absence of zooxanthellae as a primary source of nutrients. Okay. Um, these deep water corals usually do not have zooxanthellae or any kind of symbiotic um, algae or symbiotes that help them feed. They only primarily use the filter feeding mechanisms of high flow, and flow areas like this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just want to point out also on that the they sonar, water. Uh, if you're looking at the Hercules sonar, which is the one on the right, uh, the feature that we're looking at is like really prominently sticking out from the rest of this cliff face. Um, and that is where we've been tending to see these very dense and large corals. Mm. Whoa. Wait, are we looking at the thing in the sonar right now? Yeah, like right here oh. in the background, you can see it's much further back. So it's kind of jutting out. Yeah, so I'll give you a... Wow. If you look at the rocks on the top right of frame, you just don't see that any growth like what we're seeing in front of us. It's but you look off here, to the left, pretty... it's just completely <laughs> yeah. saturated. Yeah. It's almost never ending. Wow. <laughs> so definitely a good food supply in this part of the seamount. And such a beautiful diversity. It also just speaks to how well these corals have adapted two seamounts being formed because usually when seamounts form it disrupts currents and like ocean circulation and I think it's just crazy that these corals have were able to adapt and still grow alongside these seamounts. Yeah. Sure. And I think it's because of like it, it uh, gets in the way of, of circulation but that means that the, the current parts around it in various ways and that's you know that's why this happens yeah and it's again like a hard substrate for them to attach themselves to looks like an easy substrate to attach yeah. themselves to instead of a hard oh, substrate oh man oh. i meant like it's, it's not dad a joke <laughs> o'clock <laughs> wait it's too early for that 
shrimp. 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 Oh, I want to wish my sisters a hauoli lahanao. My sister Pua Mohala and Mahia Lani, today is their birthday. Oh. So happy birthday. They're both in oh. Boise, Idaho. Do you have twin birthday. sisters? No, they're not, oh, but they, oh. they were born on the same day. Really? Yeah. I have twin brothers who That's just awesome. had their birthday like four days ago. Oh, I have a twin brother, but our birthday is in July. Wow. All right, I'm just going to have to chime in. My wife's birthday is today as well. <laughs> no oh, kidding. yay. Happy birthday all. Oh. My uh, one brother is in Abu Dhabi, so he had to settle for a WhatsApp text. I'm not figuring out the time change and getting up. Bridge nav. They're only four years younger than me, though. Could we please do one zero meters, bearing two three five. I love how hard they paddle and don't move very far. But when they move their tails, they can move very far. Mm -hmm. One little shrimp in the deep blue sea. The smaller you are, the more viscous water heals you. Mm -hmm. That's deep. <laughs> it could be a Hallmark card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the smaller you are, the more viscous water feels to you. I feel like the shrimp is saying hi. Look at his, I love his little legs. They are posing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was. Oh, there he goes. He's like, hey, there's something there. It's in the camera. <laughs> and chick, 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 chick. All right. Close. Oh, he's got a friend. Well, there's some stratification in that column there. Hannah, mm -hmm. see what I'm... Yeah. Yeah. When my work is done here, I've got demarcation and stratification in on the same watch. Mm -hmm. Tito, can you uh, center up Hercules in your view? I think I I'm like tugging. To, I like to keep an eye on the tether. I'm tugging it a little bit. Does that mean you're getting ahead of? And just a little stretched out, so you can. Because the tether comes off the back of Atalanta, so when it's facing and it yeah. gets it just pulls and pulls off like that. Okay. I'm getting greedy. I'm getting too stretched out. And Atalanta's relaxing back there after a week of heroics. <laughs> oh, yeah. so. Can I do a quick zoom in just for set focus? Yeah. Quick zoom. It feels like it. my back focus is off. Uh, maybe not. Uh, I love the corals look like they're in like a cylindrical like one now. <laughs> like a um, fractal pattern. Yeah. Sebastian, can you share with our viewers what type of corals these are? Um, I believe these are hemichorallium corals. This boulder's just sitting on the ledge. You want to give it a nudge? <laughs> yeah. It's like going on hikes and kicking oh, down dead trees. Down yeah. with them out fans on the side. It's like the current's being swept up the cliff. Oh, what? Up What's wellings. there in the center right now? Right below the light? Right oh, below this. the darker matter? Yeah. Oh, never mind. What are we looking at? What? That All is the very little, square. yeah, yeah. A spiral coral from the side. Yeah. Ooh. Does he see how square that is? Yeah. Let's 
take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can we can we pick that up? <laughs> Put it on the front porch and just hug it. <laughs> but if we, we couldn't even even if we dropped all of our ballast, we probably couldn't come up with that. <laughs> Bridge now. I couldn't even imagine trying to saw that. Like, hey Val, look what we got. <laughs> I think her eyes would pop out of her, her saw again. <laughs> Please do a ship move, one zero meters bearing two saw. three zero. <laughs> Thank you. Or we can just all grab the rock hammers and try yeah. to chisel. Oh, there's a fish. Fish. I don't think we've seen that. Okay, oh, maybe we have. There. Wow. Nice view of Hercules surrounded by the wall cliff. hazards. <laughs> Sonar. I was like, ooh, the wall's behind me. Oh, the wall's in front of me. <laughs> yes. Like those cartoons where the fish swims into the ginormous fish's mouth. The seamount is just so, so just, rich. We just switched from corals to sponges between yeah. those walls. The yeah. turf war going on. Yeah. Well, if it's all sponges, then it's a nerf war. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, there's interesting research going on to now to map these types of vertical walls in high resolution and then map where the species prefer sort of their little niches that they like. So how do you do the vertical mapping? That's the question yeah. I had. Uh, well, you can do it with a uh, forward-looking multi-beam. Uh, you can do it with a, oh, like the like a LiDAR. With the Norbit? Laser scanner. Help with that? Yeah. Would that be mounted on like an ROV or are there are AUVs doing um, stuff Mostly like ROVs that? for yeah. this because it's so, <laughs> so, so tight to the surface and, and yeah. you can't, you don't want to crash into things like this with an AUV. <laughs> It's all small, small size studies, but very interesting to Definitely see. Definitely an overhang right here. <laughs> I'll bet you that uh, Dana Yerger uh, Hui has done some work in that regard. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Oh. Uh, he'll be on the ship next, next cruise. Next leg, yeah. yeah. A mesobot him. vehicle. I'll ask him in port. Look yeah. at all those sponges. <laughs> Fine. Look at all those chickens. Yep. So Sebastian, the, sh the yep. shift it's before gone. us indicated like this was one of the richest kind of ecosystems they've seen. Would you, um, your oh, yeah. uh, do you think the same? Wow. Or? I concur oh. in that statement. <laughs> I have not seen a reef like this. Ooh. Especially like, see those primnoids? Those are gigantic. Look at this coral. <laughs> um, this is amazing, especially this overhang right here is particularly Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Something. Oh my gosh, it's a massive coral. Basic. So those green lasers are 10 centimeters apart, correct? So about the width of your palm, yeah. So that's just for a viewer's reference. Four inches for those on the Imperial system-ish. Wow. Whoa. Massive coral. How old do you think this one is? One sec. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a big one. Can okay, we have to get a zoom in on the polyps there? Yep. Sure. Go for zoom. Coming in all the way in. All the way. <laughs> all the way. <laughs> uh, are you looking to do a count? Yeah, that's definitely uh, a One, two, portal. three, four, six, seven, eight. Concur. Um, what species are you, though? I keep on seeing Crinoid. those crinoids with the purple to white, which is a really cool coloration. Yeah. yeah, not what you're looking for, though. Sorry. Let's look in the background a little. Is that bamboo? Oh. It, uh, it might be. Yeah, it's bamboo. Yeah. It's bamboo. <laughs> wow. 
It's it's fun. Hannah and I are learning things. Yeah, yeah. And every now Hannah's and our right. resident <laughs> geobiologist. I'm trying. I'm trying to get better. <laughs> Gonna come forward a bit. There you we know, go. It's just those yeah. Different. Well, they do have a very clear Backwards. thing to look for. It looks like black squat corals. Or squat oh wait, look. Squat. Oh, hey. A squat off there. No, nice. blended right in. <laughs> Oh, Tori's missing out on that. Aww. Going between near and far like a champ over there. <laughs> uh, we have a cheating method over here, but... Well, it's not, che it's not cheating, not cheating if, it if it works. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing with a car like this, you can just move the focus <laughs> control and something's going to be in focus. <laughs> that, is, that is such an inaccurate statement, though, just saying. <laughs> I find that cheating often works. Not that I know from personal experience, I mean just in general. All right, All right. probably gonna start coming up the wall. Coming out All slow, right. another crinoid. Um, and Chris Kelly is mentioning all these base sponges that we're seeing are a, spe are a genus called Lephroyella. Chris Kelly, the most unretired, retired um, researcher Chris is now. asking if you can get the chance to zoom in on one of them. Yeah, um, what, what's Chris want to see? Uh, one of those sponges, base sponges we just were sure. seeing everywhere. Over on the left, maybe? Yeah, or? try to get one that's a little more clean looking. Uh, can't, may I go in? Yeah, you can go in. Thank you. I'm just so used to the Adelina thing where I can zoom it well. <laughs> Whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll slow this down a bit. He does not think those ones are Lefroyella. Some kind of other sponge. The ones with the holes? Yeah. Okay. So these ones are the ones Chris was talking about? The flatter ones are Chronolasma. He says thank you for the close up. I think we should be good. Anytime. Bridge Nev. Come on, did. Coming out. Uh, Come on ship up. move, please. Mm -hmm. One zero meters, bearing two three five. So aloha kakahi after to wide. all of those of you joining us. There you go. Go ahead. Wow. We have visitors from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, South Africa, Singapore, Portugal, oh, Philippines, man. Malaysia, Japan, Italy, Finland, Germany, and Colombia. So welcome all. Wow. Love me some Singapore. Chris, do you have any idea what all this like yellowish features are? Are those dead sponges? The tridal like pieces from above? We've been seeing them throughout the entire dive. That's a great question. Yes. That is a unique sponge. Yeah, it's there. Like stopped. Can we get a zoom in? Sure, let me get a little closer. I wonder if Chris has seen this abundance of life on similar seamounts in the monument. I'm sure he'll have to get the chance. It looks like a cattail. Oh, wow. Interesting. It's pretty. It looks like the creature from, is it the deep? 
The Abyss. The Abyss. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I've actually never seen that movie. People always talk about it. It's so good. It's just tough to see now because it's not available on Blu-ray yet. Oh. Because uh, James Cameron wants to.